Hello and welcome to this week's final devotion on this Friday, January 22nd, 2021. As we continue our look at treasures old and treasures new, uh, looking at familiar and not so familiar portions of scripture today, looking at a, a probably a, a, a more um, unfamiliar portion of scripture as we take a look at Psalm 119, verse 76, which reads, Please let your mercy be my comfort according to your saying to your servant. Life. Life can be difficult, and oftentimes is. Frustrations from where you are in life, frustrations from maybe a personal rut that you're in, frustrations with family, frustrations with something that you're struggling with, frustrations with your job, frustrations with, with what's happening in our country, in our world. Frustrations. And as we become more and more frustrated in our life, our mood tends to take a nosedive, doesn't it? It tends to sour. And as that happens, perhaps we become more irritable to those that are around us. All of this working to seemingly make life miserable. And yet the psalmist here gives us such great comfort. This translation that, that, that this picture uses says, May your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. The translations that, that we use in church um, and, and here at Trinity, the Evangelical Heritage Version says, Please let your mercy be my comfort according to your saying to your servant. You know, when we get frustrated, we, we, we tend to kind of implode, right? We, we tend to kind of hide like almost like a turtle um, underneath its shell because we don't want to deal with anything. We don't want to deal with the world around us. We wanna, don't want to deal with perhaps our family. We don't want to deal with uh, any problems or, or issues that we're struggling with. We don't want to deal with any of that. It's just easier to go and, and, and hide in that shell easier to let our feelings kind of implode inside of us. And we become more down, we become more frustrated, perhaps more irritable. And yet the psalmist encourages not only himself, but also us to find our comfort, not within ourselves, not trying to hide in that turtle shell, but in God's unfailing love. The unfailing love that he's given to us through his word, through what Jesus has done for us. And that really is the ultimate comfort, isn't it? Because no matter what we're frustrated with, no matter what's going on in our lives, whether it's our own personal failings, whether it's, it's worries about what's happening, whether uh, it's, it's frustrations, it doesn't matter. Because our ultimate comfort comes from Christ, the one who has given us everything. His unfailing love, his unending love, his unconditional love. We don't deserve that. 
I don't deserve that. You don't deserve that. But it's something that Christ has given to us. Because that's how much he loves us. So as we're frustrated with things, perhaps in our lives, perhaps in our families, perhaps in other areas, let God's unfailing love be our comfort. We have that love laid out for us in Scripture. You can tie this to John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Look to your God. Look to the cross. Look to the tomb. There you find a God who loves you. There you find unending, unconditional, unfailing love. Rest in that love. And let your frustrations, your worries, your problems, and your difficulties right there at the cross and the tomb. And let God help you with, with those, with the unfailing love and strength that he shows you. Why don't we go to God in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you give us. And most importantly, we thank you for your unfailing love, your unconditional love that you poured out on us through your son, Jesus Christ, who who came to this earth to take away our sins. And let us never forget that. And let us take our worries, our frustrations, and our comfort and our um, and our problems to you. And, and, and let us find comfort in what you have done for us and in the promises and the words that you have revealed to us in Scripture. Dear Heavenly Father, we also ask that you slow the spread of the virus as you see fit. And we also ask that you heal our country mentally, physically, emotionally, but most importantly, spiritually. We ask all these things in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. Certainly want to thank you for listening to today's devotion. I will be back next week as we continue to dig into God's word and, and um, see what God's word has to say to us. Until next time, God be with you until we meet, until we meet again.